recognize the member for Bruce Cray Owen South. Thank you, Speaker. Colleagues, on September 29th, my wife Margot and I had the great pleasure of joining a large group of passengers to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the maiden voyage of the MS Chichimon, the amazing vessel which runs between Tobermory at the tip of the Bruce Peninsula to South Bamath on uh, Manitoulin Island. The Chichimon was built in 1973 in the Collingwood shipyard. With a length of 365 feet and beam of 62 feet, it is a big and beautiful ship. There was a naming contest for the new vessel with 225 entries submitted. The $100 first prize by one was won by Donald Keeshig, although it was his daughter Lenore who submitted the entry on his behalf. Chichiwan is an Ojibwe word meaning big canoe. On September 29, 1974, Chichimon made its first run from Tobermory to Manitoulin Island, carrying 140 passengers and 60 vehicles. The ship encountered 14-foot waves on the 28-mile journey, but the new vessel made the journey with ease. Chichimon is operated by the Owen Sound Transportation Company. Its schedule runs from May to October and makes three return trips each day. The 50th anniversary voyage was wonderful, with calm waters and beautiful scenery. Author Richard Thomas, who has written a great history of the Chichimon, was a guest speaker, and we heard from Lenore tell her story of the naming. There was also great music from Moondance. Thank you to all those involved in this great celebration. It was a wonderful <coughs> tribute. Colleagues, if you want a great sailing experience, come to Tobermory, Tobermory and ride the Chichimon. Thank you. Thank you. Next member's statement. Member for Niagara Falls. Thank you. In Niagara, residents are paying out of control rates for parking at our local hospitals. It's $3 for just a half hour of parking and $16 a day. It's no secret we have an affordability crisis in the province of Ontario. Costs for rents, groceries, gas, and much more have skyrocketed over the last few years. We shouldn't be adding extra costs to people's lives and forcing families to choose between visiting a loved one at a hospital or making ends meet. Patients should be focused on getting better. Families should be focused on caregiving and support. And frontline healthcare workers sh shouldn't have to pay to go to work and park to park. We shouldn't be charging nurses, doctors, patients, and families fees to park at a hospital. I know right here at Queen's Park, MPPs do not pay for parking. Why should nurses, doctors, frontline workers have to pay to go to work to save lives? Local hospital systems depend on parking fees for millions of dollars a year, and much of that revenue goes to private companies contracted out for parking services. This government shouldn't be forcing hospitals to rely on parking fees to pay their bills or to provide care for patients. This government should be funding our public health care system and ensuring patients have the resources they need to provide the best possible care. This government should stop underfunding, provide hospital systems with the funding they need, and ensure no one, patients, family, workers alike, have to pay to park at a hospital. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Rigby. Well, thank you, Speaker. I had the opportunity last week to open a 154,000 square foot health and wellness center in West Whitby. All right. The center is the most extensive medical group practice in Canada. This innovative facility will provide hardworking families in Whitby with access to urgent care, cardiology, diagnostic imaging, physiotherapy, a pharmacy, and psychological support. The clinic's central location near the toll-free highways 412 and 418 and situated on land purchased from the Ministry of Transportation, thanks to the Honourable Carolyn Mulroney, who was the Minister of Transportation at the time, was strategically chosen to facilitate the provision of medical care by 85 physicians, including specialists and family doctors, to patients from across the region of Durham. Speaker, what's clear is that our government will leave no stone unturned to improve the quality and access to health care in Whitby and other towns and cities within the region of Durham. Thank you, Speaker. Member's statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. The constituent of mine has been in crisis for five long years. She is a mom who had to quit her job and is completely burnt out trying to care for her 24-7 complex high, 
I need eight years old daughter. Last week, after exhausting every avenue possible, she gave up guardianship of her daughter to the children's aid. Her family can no longer afford to properly care for her needs. First, the children's aid put her daughter in a hotel room in Sudbury, and now she has been moved five hours drive away from her family in a foster facility in Mississauga. All of this should and could have been prevented. In March, I held a press conference in the living room of Tina Sr. Tina had to quit her job as a registered nurse at Health Sciences North to care for her complex medical needs son, Alex. Before the Ford government came into power, children with high levels of needs received help from community-based children agency. Kids received the care and support they needed to achieve their full potential. Now, under this government, parents have to quit their job and go deep into debt to access private for-profit services. This is not right. This is not my Ontario. These kids, these families need and deserve care in Northern Ontario, in Sudbury, where I am. It is very sad to see the damage done by this government to our public not-for-profit care system and the horrible consequences on special need children and their family. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Kitchener, South Hespler. Thank you, Speaker. Um, both of my grandfathers uh, saw active service. David Dixon served in the Royal Navy, and David Dyke uh, served in the Royal Canadian Artillery and came under heavy fire at Monte Cassino. Um, when I was younger, I felt like I always heard this poem read at Remembrance Day ceremonies, but it's been quite a long time since I've heard it, and so I, I beg, Speaker, that you indulge me with a couple extra seconds. The poem Dolce et Decorum Est. Bent double, like old beggars under sacks. Knock kneed, coughing like hags, we cursed through sludge. Till on the haunting flares, we turned our backs, and towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched asleep. Many had lost their boots, but limped on, bloodshod. All went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, Deaf even to the hoots of gas shells dropping softly behind. Gas, gas, quick boys, an ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man in fire or lime. Dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea, I saw him drowning. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothering dream you two could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face like a devil sick of sin. If you could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling from the froth corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud of incurable sores on innocent tongues. My friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory. The old lie, dulce et decorum est, pro patria mori. That is Wilfred Owen. He died age 25 in the trenches one week before the war ended, and his parents received the telegram notifying them of his death as the bells were ringing out on Armistice Day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Ottawa West Nepean. Thank you, Speaker. This government has broken our health care system, and it is regular people who are paying the price. This past weekend, I heard three stories from constituents that highlight the state that our hospitals are in, Speaker. One of the people I spoke to spent eight hours at the Queensway Carleton Emergency Department, worried that she was having a heart attack. This woman had had a heart attack before, so in addition to the chest pain, she was dealing with trauma for eight hours. She was freezing, so she asked for a blanket and was told the nurses were so busy that no one had time to grab a blanket for her. Just imagine what that must have felt like, Speaker. Freezing, scared, and in pain, and no one has time to help. Another constituent, a 14-year-old girl, sat in the ER with her mom for seven and a half hours with a concussion. And they felt lucky because they were told when they arrived that the wait would be 14 hours. I also spoke with health care workers at the Queensway Carleton who told me that their working conditions are absolutely impossible. Patient care aides are only being given three days of training, so there's high turnover, 
because workers are overwhelmed. Workers are being assigned to areas where they don't have any training or experience, knowing they can't spend the time with patients that the patients deserve. And they can't take vacation time because of the worker shortage, so they never get a break. Despite all these challenges, Speaker, there was not a single new investment in hospitals in the government's fall economic statement. That is an utter dereliction of duty. My constituents deserve better, and the people of Ontario deserve better. The next member's statement. The member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, today I rise to recognize an extraordinary individual from our community, nurse practitioner Clarissa Townsend, who recently received the prestigious 2024 Nurse Practitioners of Ontarians Bollringer Ingelheim Award for her outstanding contributions to patient care. Clarissa is from North Hastings and has dedicated her life to helping others, exemplifying the true spirit of nursing. She has an impressive educational background and has been a beacon of knowledge and care in our healthcare system. For over 18 years as a nurse practitioner in Bancroft and now at the Kawartha Cardiology Clinic, Clarissa has developed and implemented innovative programs to optimize the treatment of patients with heart failure, hypertension, and diabetes. Her commitment to improving patients, improving the, the that, and improving patient outcomes through education and self-directed care, has made significant impact on the lives of so very many. Clarissa's recognition is not just a personal achievement; it reflects the incredible work of nurse practitioners across Ontario, who are leaders in healthcare. Her humility and her dedication to her profession shine through in her statement, I'm just a person who wants to do good and I want to see people cared for. Speaker, I commend Clarissa Townend for her hard work and determination to be a role model for her daughter and for all young women who aspire to make a difference in their communities. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Orléans. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Président. J'ai l'honneur de... Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm pleased here to, to speak about the uh, for the Mouvement d'Application d'Orléans, MIFO, as we say, uh, support the, the, the Francophones since 40 years old uh, in the east of Ontario, and it is the biggest uh, cultural center of the Francophonie outside of the Quebec. Uh, MIFO offers educational services, kids, culture for uh, older uh, and also for special needs. Uh, we need to think about uh, building a uh, sport, sports uh, sport installation that will generate 300 fee works jobs and also MIFO throughout eastern Ontario offering educational cultural artistic sports and recreational activities to the largest concentration of francophone minorities in the country outside of Quebec and it's hoping to bring a state-of-the-art recreation and sporting facility to serve the Franco francophone community of eastern Ontario MIFO was recently applied for funding under the community sport and recreation fund and mr. speaker if props were permitted I'd be throwing the ball across the aisle to the minister of sport because minister this will be the easiest touchdown you'll ever score Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Merci. Member statements. Member statements. The member for Brampton West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I'm honored to recognize three remarkable Bramptonians, a part of the Toronto Pearson Airport Running Club who have achieved extraordinary milestones, showcasing that age and challenges are no barrier to endurance and excellence. At the age, ages of 65 and 64, respectively, Mr. Kuldeep Garewal and Mr. Harjit Singh have demonstrated unparalleled dedication. Mr. Garewal completed the half Ironman in Welland, Niagara Falls, finishing an impressive journey of two kilometers swimming in 58 minutes, 90 kilometers biking in three hours and 47 minutes, 
and a 21.1 kilometer run in two hours and 53 minutes for a total time of seven hours and 59 minutes. Mr. Harjit Singh took on the full Ironman challenge in Sacramento, California, completing a grueling four, four kilometer swim in one hour and 12 minutes, 180 kilometer biking in eight hours and 39 minutes, and 42.2 kilometer marathon run in six hours and 11 minutes for a total time of 16 hours and 43 minutes. I would also like to highlight Mr. Jaswinder Daliwal, who completed the Niagara Falls Marathon on October 27, 2024, with a finish of 4 hours, 9 minutes, and 49 seconds. His dedication and impressive pace, pacing truly reflect his commitment to endurance and athleticism. These accomplishments by Mr. Garewal, Mr. Harjit Singh, and Mr. Daliwal are testaments to the power of determination, strength, and perseverance. Brampton is incredibly proud of these achievements and extend my hurtful congratulations to three on their remarkable journeys. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. The next member's statement, the member for Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. This uh, past Friday, November 1st, 2024, I had the privilege of being a part of a new phase in the history of Sault Ste. Marie's Royal Canadian Legion Branch 25. They needed a new building, and they have found an innovative way to achieve their goal. Through a unique partnership with a local developer, they were able to demolish their previous facility and build a brand new nine-story in, uh, building including 108 affordable housing units, a gathering hall, meeting rooms, museum amenities rooms, and fully developed grounds. It's impressive. The state-of-the-art facility is Branch 25's new home, the place where they will continue to honour and serve our veterans and our community for years to come while securing a stable, a stable source of revenue to offset their operating costs. We remember the incredible sacrifice our veterans made so we may enjoy our freedom. Our local Royal Canadian Legion Branch 25 works tirelessly supporting our local veterans and ensuring that we never forget. I want to thank our local Branch 25 on their new home, and I want to thank them again for the incredible work they do supporting our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.